Hey, I bought a Casio CTK591 for $30, and it's great. I think I'm losing my mind. Okay, here's what happened. I was online and I saw this cheap Casio for like 10 bucks. And it was from, I don't know, sometime in the 80s. And it had no MIDI and it just had a quarter inch headphone jack output. And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to buy that thing for 10 bucks for those cheesy 8-bit tones and then sample it in Logic and make my own Casio instrument with all of those, you know, cheesy familiar sounds. Anyway, that device uh, sounded interesting to me, but it was sold before I could pick it up. Sure, for 10 bucks, you know. So the next best thing was this, which I found for 30 bucks, and it's a Casio CTK591. Not sure what year it's from, but it has great speakers and all the typical Casio stuff. I've never owned one of these before, and I thought for 30 bucks, it's a 61 key keyboard. I could use it as a controller, if nothing else. So I noticed it had MIDI. I plugged it into Logic with MIDI and it works great. And there's like 200 tones in here and 150 rhythms and all kinds of capabilities that uh, I had no idea. Thanks, Hugo. I had no idea Casio had all these capabilities because I've only ever had Roland, Korg, and Yamaha professional keyboards in the past. So this has been quite an adventure. Let me tell you about it and what my plans are. Take those droids down. Ah, those crankers have tough armor. Let's move. Go, go, go. I bet most people watching this have had a Casio before, but not me. So I'm playing with some of the tones. <laughs> Some of the pianos are kind of cheap, but you know, there's there's some good ones in there. Oh, I like this Rhodes. And as I'm going through the tones, I'm realizing how much of that cheesy sound from Casio is because of these speakers. So what can I use this for? Well, it does work as a MIDI controller uh, with its MIDI in and out functions. You can play it and use it as an inexpensive way to record MIDI. It is velocity sensitive, but it doesn't have aftertouch. Another way you can use it is as a sound source. It's advertised as having 255 tones, but that's a little misleading. The reality is that tones 118 to 245 are general MIDI. So they're the same tones that you'd find in almost any keyboard, any instrument, and built into your computer. That leaves you with about a hundred tones that are unique to Casio. And out of that, between 246 and 254 are all drum sets. And there's nothing particularly redeeming about those drum sounds. So using it as a sound source is practical, but there are other sound sources that are going to be better. Now with the MIDI hooked up, it is going to play those sounds. Now hearing the Casio through my main sound system, it sounds pretty good. In fact, it doesn't have those 8-bit cheap Casio sounds that I was originally after. So the idea of sampling it and using those samples in some lo-fi hip-hop songs, I don't think that's really going to happen. There's really other sources for those sounds. 
and I don't think this Casio necessarily delivers them. A couple quirky things about it, when you plug in the sustain pedal, the sustain pedals that I have work with Roland, Yamaha, and Korg, but it seems that the way the sustain circuitry is set up on this Casio is it's reversed. So when you press down on the sustain pedal, it stops the sustain, and when you lift up, you get sustain. Now normally on most other keyboards, that's a programmable feature. You go into settings and you can switch the, basically switching the polarity of the sustain pedal. But this keyboard doesn't have that capability. So one is you can get the right sustain pedal for the Casio. There's lots of them available. You can pick one up for probably about 10 bucks. Let me show you in detail the other way that you can change the banks and control it as a sound source from within Logic. I've got a very simple song set up with multiple tracks. The first track up at the top, you can see it's sending the output to the MT4, which is my MIDI multi-port device. And I've got port two set up as the output port. On the second channel, you see the MIDI output channel is channel 2. So on channel 1, I've got electric piano. Channel 2, I've got a bass. Like any general MIDI type instrument, I could have up to 16 parts uh, or 16 tracks all playing on the Casio at the same time. The real limitation is the fact that it only has 24 note polyphony. So as soon as you start putting in drums or something more complex, you're going to you're going to run out of notes. Changing the settings is pretty easy. Off to the left here, you can see I have a list of all the general MIDI instruments, and it's, uh, it's, it's familiar if you've used something like this before. I always laugh that uh, patch number 127 is gunshot, so if you have that, you're going to get a lot of gunshots. But you can see I'm controlling what patch is being played from within Logic. <laughs> The problem that I ran into is that I only have access to the first 128 sounds, which are general MIDI, even though there's other tones in the keyboard itself. So if I don't change the patch from within Logic, I can actually change it on the keyboard. So I'll just, uh, while that's playing, I'm going to reach over to the Casio and just change the tone bank manually. I'm bypassing Logic sending the program and bank information that's off on the left. In fact, that's the only way that you can access the tones of the Casio beyond the standard general MIDI 128 tones that all devices support. But you could use it that way. I mean, it's not such a hassle to reach over to the keyboard and change the tone setting. And that'll give you full access to tones that come delivered. Let me show you how I have that set up. If I go into, if I open the MIDI environment and select MIDI instruments, you'll see here I've set up the Casio CTK590 as a MIDI, uh, multi-channel MIDI instrument. The patch names that you see in here are the standard general MIDI patches. If I change the bank, it turns out it doesn't send any bank information, so I can change it to one. I click on something, and it, it, it still only plays the general MIDI tones. There was no way for me to access the, say, the drum tones. So it has some limitations as a sound source. But, you know, you got tones, which is cool. And then you got rhythms, which are cool. I didn't realize it's got, like, of course, play and stop. But look at this intro. Thank you. 
And then it's got a fill at the end. This is so cool. Here's a normal fill. Neat, neat. Here's a variation. And here's an ending. Here's an ending. Maybe not. I don't know. Of course, you can adjust the tempo. You've got transpose. It's all pretty cool. Yeah, so cool. And then, um, so you got tones, you got rhythms, and then you got this whole song bank thing, which I just don't understand at all, but essentially, you go into song bank and you put in a number, basically play an entire song. Okay, enough of that. I could see myself touring old age homes all around town with just this one $30 keyboard. It has a kind of unique feature. It has this mic input here. At least it's designed for mic with this uh, sing-along capability. I think it's just, but I do think it's a stereo input, which is kind of interesting. And I saw in a demo, you can really plug anything you want in there. Like I saw a guy plugged a guitar in there with some effects and he's playing guitar through this thing. He was using the uh, rhythms and the chord uh, play along. And because it has its own gain control, you can pretty much adjust that as a line or mic or anything you need to use. And it has um, transposition built into it. I, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but it was designed so that if you were singing into it and you wanted to sing in a different key, you could just hit transpose and it would automatically adjust. Um, it probably adjusts the playback, not the vocals coming in. Anyway, that was kind of a unique feature. And over here you have, you know, your basic sequencer controls for the songs and the piano bank that's built in. Ah, the uh, necessary orchestra hits. And it has things like split and layer, so you can layer more than one sound, just two. And you can, the split is automatically this particular C, but you can change the split to another key if you want. There is no reverb. No effects at all, actually. You cannot program the sequencer. It really only plays back what's already in the system. So you can't use this as a generic sequencer. The conclusion I came to is that for 30 bucks, this was a really good deal. But the best use of a Casio keyboard like this is actually to learn how to play, which is really its intended use in the first place. It does have speakers, it has a mic input, it has some training capabilities, this three-step lesson system. The display on it is really quite informative if you're not a keyboard player. It tells you where to put your right hand and your left hand. And I think it's a good platform for just learning how to play keys. For me personally, as a MIDI controller, yeah, it's a 61 key MIDI controller and I could use it that way. As a sound source, I probably won't use it. In the long run, I don't think I'll hang on to it for very long. It was just an interesting experiment more than anything else. If you're looking at buying an old Casio keyboard, I guess the SK-1 with its limited 12 8-bit sounds is what a lot of people are after. And it's currently selling for quite a price. People are asking anywhere from $100 to $150 for that, that device. Although sometimes you can find it at Salvation Army or Goodwill for 10 bucks sitting in a pile or in somebody's garbage if you go look out on the street. This particular Casio is pretty full featured and as I say, it's good for someone who's just starting out. I hope you find this video interesting and useful. And if you're after more things like this, click on the subscribe button or leave me a comment. And if you have a Casio like this, tell me about your experience and how you're using it.